Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between. And people, this is episode 101. So for special episode 101, I'm going to show you how I make Miniature Painting 101 episodes slash my painting tutorials. Hey everyone, welcome to Miniature Painting 101, episode 101. For this episode, I decided to do a behind the scenes a video on how to make a miniature painting 101 episode or how to make a painting tutorial in general basically and I decided it got kind of fun to do that for my hundred first episode of miniature painting 101 so let's go ahead and get started so first of all a lot of people ask how do I get my ideas for miniature painting 101 most of the time it's actually just a request by you uh, I get a lot of requests for specific episodes of miniature painting 101 and any ones that I have access to the models right now and the paints I go ahead and do it Otherwise, I try to order models, or whenever I, I find a model that I really think could fulfill a role in a Miniature Painting 101 episode, I pick it up and do the tutorial on it. Yeah, that's basically it. But as I said, I get most of my ideas from you, the viewers, and that's how I've been choosing a lot of my videos, and so I've been able to get up to over 100 episodes already. Pretty fun stuff there. And uh, yeah, and that's basically how I swing things. Now, a lot of people wonder, how do I film? How do I edit? And what's the setup of my camera and everything on uh, for Miniature Painting 101 and my painting tutorials at the same time. So this video is actually going to show you a bit behind the scenes on here what my desk looks like, on what I would typically do when filming, and I'll even show myself filming a previous Miniature Painting 101 at multiple angles so you can see exactly how I film it, and then I'll show you how I edit it as well. So let's go ahead and show you my camera setup on how to film it, and once I've chosen a model, and once I've chosen a painting tutorial. So hey everyone, here is my computer setup. Now this is what people wonder. So this is my setup that I use for my painting tutorials and my miniature painting 101. So as you can see, I have the model. Uh, this is last week's uh, horse painting tutorial model. And it's there. And as you can see, I just have it set up so that I can monitor on a monitor. That's basically it. And I have my camera. This is the camera that I use for all of my, pretty much all my videos, but it is a Canon HFR 300 uh, Vixia, so that's it. And basically I have it set so that it's over the shoulder, so when I'm sitting down, I can sit down like this in my painting style, and uh, I can paint as normal. I can pick up the model and paint, and all I need to do is to make sure that it's still in the frame and looking good. I can look at my monitor, which is just wired to my, my camera, and that's basically it. Now when setting up your camera, you gotta make sure a few things. Number one, obviously, you gotta set up the uh, the focus. Now, I always set it to manual focus, and I set it on this object. And what I do is, I typically just put the model where I like to uh, paint at, from a comfortable distance, and then make sure that the camera is set up on that point, and focused on that point as well. Now, the second thing you gotta set is the white balance. Now, I think the white balance is slightly off on this camera, but it's okay, because it's okay on that camera. That's the one that matters, obviously, the one filming the paint tutorial. You gotta make sure the white balance is correctly uh, set for this tutorial, because you don't want it to come off, especially with painting tutorials, you don't want to come up, the color to come off wrong with it being too blue or too red. So you have to make sure that the, uh, the white balance is completely set correctly, and finally, the exposure. You don't want to make sure that you don't want to uh, oversaturate the exposure or undersaturate. You want to have the correct exposure on the camera as well. And you can set this all manually and then go with your painting tutorials. Now, for my lighting source, uh, excluding the light from the room, which there isn't actually a lot, it's a pretty dark room, I have two lamps, which I have uh, put wax paper or parchment paper over with to diffuse the lighting. So basically, it softens the shadows and makes it much more. Uh, presentable for the camera for doing painting tutorials and that's basically it. it softens up the light I've just tied it around it with stuff it's all good they don't heat up very much and inside are uh, some uh, light bulbs some uh, of the energy saver light bulbs like there just the energy saver light bulbs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. basically and they're um, I intentionally use the ones that are daylight not the normal white, uh, not the normal yellow light ones. The ones that are in daylight, so they're actually white colored light bulbs, not the yellowish ones. But regardless of whichever ones you use, if you properly set the white balance on your camera, it should take that into consideration for your pictures. And I, the reason why they're set up like this is that I can use the other one for my light box over there. So as you can see, so that's it. That's my setup in a nutshell. So I put the model on the table over there, 
and then I just film right around the side. So now I'm going to film my painting, my, uh, I'll show you what last week's miniature painting 101 would have looked like from a different angle so you can see both me filming and turning the camera and filming by painting the model. And that's basically it. That's my setup in a nutshell. So, as I mentioned, I now just basically film as normal. I make sure to start my camera and as you can see I'm just making sure that my paint and my model are in frame. You gotta keep them in frame. So now using my wet palette as I typically do with all my tutorials I just put the paint into my wet palette. Of course giving it a good shake put a good amount in my wet palette. Well since I'm doing it primarily a dry brush method I'm not gonna use that much paint and in this case it was just a little bit of mixing of color because for that particular step in the tutorial I need to mix a couple colors Grab the right brush. Always make sure when I'm doing my painting tutorial that um, I have very good access to the model, so I don't want anything in the way of the model. And right now I'm just loading my dry brush, wiping it off, and then dry brushing the miniature. And as you can see, I'm, I have the, what actually ended up in the frame of the shot on the bottom right hand. And the key is minimal movement and keeping the uh, the model in frame. The, the automatic focus, or the manual focus has been set on that model, on that location. So you gotta keep the model in that frame and in focus. And that's essentially the keys when doing a tutorial. You know, it just, it sucks when there's too much movement or the model ends up not being in focus. And right now I'm just dry brushing the miniature and make sure to get a nice solid coat of that particular color. And as you see, I turn it off and I'm done. And that's basically it. So now that the actual filming is done, I'm gonna upload all the uh, footage to my computer. And what I typically do is just put it into its own file, and uh, yeah, that way, it, you know, each one, each, sorry, each miniature painting one gets its own folder, and I'll upload it, and I'm good to go then. It'll be pretty easy today. Uh, yeah, it'll be pretty easy stuff. Now, I do make my titles in, for those of you wondering, I make them in uh, Adobe After Effects. And I just have a, a pre-made one that I just change the words and then find a filter. I'll show you how to do it in a second, pretty just pretty quickly. And then I also uh, use it to uh, I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit Miniature Painting 101. So let's go ahead and work on my titles. So for my titles, I use Adobe After Effects, and all I simply do is I have a, a file created already for all my titles, so all I just simply do is change the title from the previous one to the current one, in this case it was Part 100, Horses, and then I would change the texture using a, a set of textures for the 3D elements that I have. Um, of course I'll keep it the same in this particular case because there's two in a row on the same topic. Save the file and render it as possible. It doesn't take me very long to create the titles since I already have the pre-working thing. I just uh, put in the title and then choose a color accordingly. And as I mentioned, I use Adobe Premiere Pro for my actual files. I start, of course, by na naming the file, put it in the correct area of my computer. I like to keep my stuff organized. And then I import all the files I need, starting off with the specific channel intro. So in this case, it's the warp for this particular video. So the warp intro first, followed by the intro for the specific type of video. So next, it would be Miniature Painting 101. So my Miniature Painting 101 intro. And then finally, the one for that specific tutorial. So in this case, it'd be the one I just rendered, part 100 for horses. Put that in next. And of course, make sure they're all set to the correct scale of video. Next, import all of the parts of that particular video. Drag and drop them into the project. So make sure all the correct episodes are in. Yep. And as you can see now, the next, I just change the speed of them. I scale them to the correct uh, scale. That way, they're all 720 the way I like them, and then I will make them all the correct speed. So I will uh, increase the speed of all of them because otherwise it would just take way too long to show the tutorial. So in this case, I'm going to increase them to about 230%. Uh, it's a little high for my normal videos. I usually do about 200%, so it's twice speed. But this way, it just makes it a correct length of the video, or an, at least a, a good length for this particular video. And then I remove all the excess spaces, and then it's time to put in all the titles of the specific paints that I use in this video. Um, I start off with, I use the, the the font transformers and I like to keep them in the right corner and pretty small in this case I start off with dry at bark and then I will uh, just drag and drop that throughout the entire segment of that clip that way you know that when I'm painting the miniature in this particular area it is dry at bark and then all I simply do is change it one at a time adding new uh, and new titles one at a time 
and keeping that same font in the same location by creating a new one based on the previous uh, particular video. And that's it. So now that the uh, everything is put together and edited nicely, I will now do the uh, voiceover with using my Snowball microphone. It's pretty awesome, I love it. So uh, yeah, I'll just use that quickly, do the voiceover as you can see, and uh, that's pretty much Miniature Painting 101 in a nutshell. So let's go ahead and do that now. Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between. And this is part 100, we're in the triple digits, I can't believe that people. Horses, how to paint horses using a dry brush approach as opposed to the layer approach that I showed you last week. So we start off by this model entirely, uh, I base coated entirely with dryad bark. Uh, as I showed you last week where I painted all using a nice thin down approach with dryad bark. So now I'm going to take, so as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. I really hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for next week's part 101, which is just around the corner. When we hit 101, people, leave comments in the comment section down below of what you want to see in future videos. And I'll do my best to make sure that every suggestion happens. So thank you so much for watching this episode. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone. So when the voiceover is completely done, I then import the song associated with the video type. I have a different song for each type of video. Miniature Painting 101, for example, uses the song Hack Beat from uh, Kevin MacLeod. So then I import it in, drag it into the scenario, make sure that it is long enough so that it covers the entire video. And then of course, I have to drop it down so that it's the appropriate volume, because obviously you want to hear my voice more than the music, and occasionally I have made this mistake in the past, and people call me out on it when the music is too loud. So now that it is the correct one, and I drop it down to the correct uh, decibels as well. I usually drop it to minus 20 in my videos, so that way it uh, I can do that and it's all, uh, it's all okay. You can hear my voice clearly over it. So then I just make sure to record a JPEG uh, thumbnail for this particular video that I always use for my uploading. And now it's time to render. So I save it and I render it. And I just make sure to, to, of course, change the name of the render to something that I can easily upload it with, like Miniature Painting 101, part 100, horses, dry brushed, like you can see here, once you get organized. Make sure it's the correct frame rate. I usually uh, edit at 24 and then the correct uh, size of file. And then I just hit export and now I'm good to go and my computer deals with it. And that's it in a nutshell. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Miniature Painting 101. And uh, now the episode's done, I can upload it and you guys can watch it. That's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. But most importantly, thank you for all the assistance and support you guys have given me so for the first 101 episodes. I can't believe I already hit 101. It's craziness, so stay tuned for the next 100 episodes uh, where I'm gonna keep taking Miniature Painting 101 to the next level. So thank you so much for supporting my videos and uh, all the ideas, all the support from this series. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I really hope you learned a little bit about how to make a Miniature Painting 101 episode or painting, or painting tutorial in general. So stay tuned for the next episode, 102, which is just around the corner. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.